Well, we got a new project. As you can see, my 1988 Honda Shadow is in the shop. And I've already taken off the mouse infested saddlebags and the mouse infested stuff inside of it. It's still filthy, but it's uh it's gonna it's gonna run again. So uh what I found when I went and dug this thing out of the shed is that you know, I had to pull the front brake caliper off because it was dragging and uh the tires were flat. I had to put air in them. This has been sitting in my shed for like five years. Um so Issue number one. Issue number one. This is the battery box. It normally sits right in here. The problem is, is that I went out and got a better battery for this bike. It's a lithium ion polymer. It weighs about three pounds and uh, it has 420 cold cranking amps. Now, my old battery weighed, I think it was about 16 pounds and it had 190 cold cranking amps and it died all the time so we got a better battery the problem is is the battery will fit in the battery box this way the battery will fit in the battery box this way thickness wise but the damn thing is like an eighth of an inch too big to fit in this box in the length. So what we're going to have to do is either modify this battery box or make a new one. And I'm kind of leaning towards making a new one because I hope I can show you this, but. all this stuff all these connectors and all you know my my ignition want my ignition modules right here um, all this stuff attaches to the battery box here's something we won't need anymore an acid dumper so we'll get rid of that but I have this space to fit it in and it does fit in there um, I can't go below this bracket here because the swing arm comes up and obviously you know I got the frame here I got to deal with on the top so it's gonna be tight um, I think I'll be able to get it in there though if not we'll, we'll have to find a different place for it uh, and then uh, I got to do the brakes, I got to do the clutch, which I have all the parts for now. Um, obviously change the oil, I'll probably have to pull the carbs off it and uh, do something with that because they've been sitting there. I mean I did drain it of fuel five years ago, I put oil down the spark plug holes, I changed the engine oil, um, you know so it shouldn't be too bad, but we'll probably have to take the carbs apart and soak them in acetone and blow them out with uh, with wa with uh, compressed air. I've had to do that in the past. So, anyways, um, that's the scoop on the new project. We we finally got the bike in the shop, and man, it was it was a monumental task because. Uh, the place where it was was down a pretty good hill and um, <laughs> I tried lifting it up with my tractor my my 8N or my 9N rather 
it has a shop crane mounted on the three point hitch and it could pick it up but uh, every time I started trying to drive up the hill the thing would start popping wheelie so I rapidly gave up on that and then uh, what I ended up doing was uh, putting it on my big uh, trailer that connects to my pickup truck strapping it down with tie downs and uh, dragging the whole mess up the hill with my pickup and uh, you know getting it off the trailer with no brakes I mean it's <laughs> it's a little hairy because you get to go down that ramp but uh, everything worked out nobody died the bike didn't get wrecked except by the damn mice so um, yeah this is it the start of probably a month's worth of work getting this thing going again all right I've been beating on this thing for a couple hours and I got the battery in it did do a little trimming on the battery box but the originals in there it fit everything clears none of the wires are hooked up yet but that's no big deal but I got the battery in so the next thing I'm sorta of, kinda of, maybe kinda of thinking about is trying to start it uh, I don't know if that's an exercise in futility or not because of the carburetors but I think we're gonna give it a shot and see what happens she don't start well then we'll take the tank off and uh, start going through it from there but uh, yeah I, I'm, I'm feeling optimistic about this thing at this point um, it looks like uh, this is going to be riding on the road pretty soon nothing horrible I mean it could use a paint job and it's definitely going to get all the mouse crap scraped off of it but uh, yeah that's the biggest hurdle right there is getting that battery to fit in there I mean it it didn't have a thousandth of an inch to spare when I was done and what I ended up doing was cutting off the top and the bottom of the battery box so the terminals are still protected and the clamp right here uh, holds it in you know original factory stuff and given the fact that it only weighs a couple pounds rather than the big heavy lead acid one I think it's adequately supported at this point so um yeah I gotta go hook up some cables I gotta route some stuff and uh, I think the next time you see this I will be attempting to crank it well there's the first piece of mouse crap I gotta deal with fortunately I haven't this is the only part of it that I found that's it's this bad yeah I hate I hate friggin mice alright my battery is in there and it's hooked up and no fire came out but man I'll tell you something <laughs> Yeah, for these bikes, I mean, you can't, you can't pack more stuff into this thing. I mean, like, it's unbelievable. Every cable has to go exactly where it has to go or something will not fit. But, it is in there. The cover's all fit on. So... Now we're going to try some stuff. Headlight lights up. Alright, I got the ignition turned off. I'm going to just crank it for a second here, see what happens. Nice. Alright, I even got my little uh, 
my battery tender pigtail wired up. So, uh, yeah, next job cleaning. Look at this. Every square inch of this thing is covered with mouse footprints. So, uh, you probably don't want to watch that. So, I'll see you when I can sit on this thing without feeling disgusting. Okay, so the good news is front wheel spins real good, so there's nothing wrong with that. But here's what's wrong with the caliper. It's all this corrosion here. So what I did is before I took this off here, I pushed these back with C-clamps and then uh, put the brakes on, you know, pumped them back out, and they wouldn't retract, they locked the wheel up. So, we're going to take this thing apart and clean out the crud. Okay, so, getting these uh, pistons out of the bore wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. And the problem was, is one of them was moving uh, freely but the other one was stuck so what I ended up having to do after screwing around with it for like an hour was I put it all back together um, I put a C-clamp on the piston that was moving and then uh, basically like filled the brake system up again and pumped it out got them both out and um, yeah there was a lot of corrosion right at the face of this and in this first groove, which they call the dust seal groove. So um, what I ended up doing was putting a little brass wheel on my Dremel tool and running it around the inside of these seal grooves. I, I pulled the rubber out, the rubber was toast. Both the seals were gone. So um, this is all cleaned up now, ready for the new seals, which are on order. Should be here in another day or two. Uh, I got them off Amazon Prime for ten bucks. Um, now these pistons, one of them has some galling on it, and the other one just has some some little corrosion and stuff. So what I'm going to do is on the, now the seals run down about a quarter of an inch, even when these pistons are all the way in there's still some dead space at the top of the piston and that's where these uh, these nicks are so if I stone them down um, it's still not going to leak because the seal is only riding you know in the bottom inch of this thing so it ought to be fine um, so I'm going to stone that off with uh, this fine diamond lap that I have and then um, the other one is fine. It just has some, I guess you'd call it corrosion. It's probably just rubber from the seals that have stuck to the piston. So um, I've got some really ultra fine um, Scotch Brite. And I mean, I don't even know what this is, but it's like the finest you can get. And I'm just going to polish this up get this all cleaned up and ready and like I said I already took care of these bores with the Dremel uh, so they're fine now so um, well we've been polishing this thing up for a few minutes and this one here cleaned up real good except for that little pit right there I'm pretty sure that the seal is riding around here, so it ought to be okay. If not, I'll have to get a new piston. I think those are like only about six or seven bucks. Um, but other than that, they both cleaned up real good. Here's the other one. That's about the finest I can get on it with the Scotch Bright. And uh, they fit in real good.
So, uh, I got my finger over the hole now. It's off. So, when we get those seals, this thing ought to fly. And then, uh, show you how to refill the brake system and bleed it because it's totally empty right now. But, um, yeah, it didn't come out. It didn't come out too bad. I wish I had kind of shown you more when it was first taken apart. But basically, you know, these are steel. And this is aluminum. And I guess normally what really happens here is that the seals keep the piston from contacting the aluminum. But as soon as like one of them starts to break down and allows the aluminum to touch the steel that's when you get all this corrosion at the face here and it, it kind of migrates in and um, you know it just swells up and seizes the piston right in there so uh, yeah it looks like that problem is going to be solved we'll just uh, wait for our parts to come and So we'll wait for our parts to come and then uh, we'll put it back together. And then uh, I think we'll be, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, since there's, engine in the, uh, there's oil in the engine, I'm going to throw a little gas in it, see if I can start it, and see how it runs. And that'll tell me if I have to do any, anything to the carbs. But, uh, you know, if it's running okay and everything, then... Uh, I'll take the side plate off and, and do the clutch and then uh, we got to be ready to start riding it providing I don't find anything else that's uh, it's been emulsified in this thing so anyways uh, that's the story on the brakes so here are the seals I took out of there and these are the dust seals and these are the actual hydraulic seals and these don't look too bad. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't think these had any problem. They were, they were still working, which is why I wasn't seeing any brake fluid leak out of the, the caliper. But these here are the dust seals, and these are riding right on the, right on the edge there. That you know they're exposed to the elements, and you can see how these have broken down. And this is what allowed. The water to get into the bore and start the corrosion up which caused the piston to seize up inside of there EDPM rubber supposedly so that's what we ordered that much stuff all right back to the cleaning tasks Oh, she's getting shinier. Yep. Took like three hours and scraped the mouse crap off. And, uh, all right. Yep. She's looking good. Hard to believe she was sitting in a shed for five years. So yeah. Um, got everything polished up pretty good. I gotta put some wax on it. I think the next thing I'm gonna do is drain the fuel out of it and uh, put some good fuel in it open up the fuel shut off valve see if it starts and if it does we're in real good shape uh. yeah baby let's see some lights 
is getting ready to roar. So they all work. Let's see the turn signals. with the turn signal switch but a little WD-40 took care of that right she's fixed next thing it seems like there's a long list. Alright, here we go. I got uh, two gallons of fresh gas in this thing. Fuel selector is on. Crank it for a few seconds with uh, with the ignition off, just to get some oil pressure up. Run on. That's not good. Spark plugs, maybe. Mighty Shadow will ride again. So I just checked the battery and um, man, even when this thing's cranking, it's at 12 volts. So I mean, it's definitely uh, cranking out some serious amps there. there. 
there supposedly is uh, a fusible link in series with this thing, but I don't know what it's rated for. Um, and when it's charging, it's right up at like 13 and a half volts, so it's good. And look at how she starts. Now it's warmed up now, but. That little, that little funny noise you're hearing is uh, an open breather tube. So no question about it, the carbs need some tweaking, but uh, <laughs> not bad for uh, throwing some gas in it after five years. Now, <laughs> look at what I took out of it. That is five-year-old gasoline that was in the bottom tank. Now the way this works is, you know, there's the regular top tank right there, but down in the bottom there's this the uh, the main tank let's say so when I parked this thing I had drained out you know all the all the fluid out of this tank and then I closed the uh, fuel shut off and let it run dry so there was what three quarters of a gallon of fuel in the bottom tank which I guess isn't too bad because uh, Kept things from rusting up. The inside of the top tank and everything looks beautiful. But uh, how can I complain about Honda, man? I mean, <laughs> their their engines are amazing. I mean, I just basically took the crappy fuel out, put the good fuel in, didn't touch nothing else, cranked it. You saw me cranking it. That was the first startup for the thing in five years totally unrehearsed on camera.